right. How good is this fit? That is precisely called goodness of fit and it is called goodness of fit uh, because there are goodness of fit tests, okay. Uh, so, uh, what are we trying to answer here through these goodness of fit tests? What are we trying to answer? We are trying to see whether the fitted distribution is good enough for the data. What is the fitted distribution? The distribution that we are trying to fit, okay. What, the dis what is the distribution that we are trying to fit? We are trying to fit an exponential distribution. What are the methods of doing that? Well, you can use frequency comparison. You can compare the frequency that comes from exponential distribution and compare that with the frequency that you have observed in the data set. Compare that if the frequencies are matching, then you say that exponential distribution is a good fit. You may use what are called as probability plots and uh, I have couple of examples uh, in the subsequent slides. Those are essentially visual tools. Uh, they tell you whether the observed uh, uh, probability or observed percentile or observed quartile matches the, uh, the, the, the quartiles and percentiles that may come from the distribution, right. If it fits, you will get a nice line. Uh, if it does not fit, uh, you will be far away from that line, uh, couple of slides later. Or there are very rigorous statistical tests called goodness of fit tests, right. Uh, many of them use a chi-square distribution. There are other, uh, uh, there are various uh, tests. Uh, those are also described. Let us, let us, let us look at, let us not look at frequency comparison that gets little bit technical. Let us look at probability plots. There are two kinds of probability plots we are going to look at. One are, uh, the, the first one is called QQ plot which is quantile quantile plot. So, quantile quantile plot essentially compares uh, the, the qth quantile uh, of the sample distribution. Sample distribution is the distribution from the sample and uh, uh, the, the uh, correct distribution is the distribution that is fitted, okay. Uh, so, uh, this indicates uh, the distribution that we are trying to fit and this indicates the distribution that comes from the sample, okay. Now, if this x that comes from the fitted distribution matches with the x that comes from the sample distribution then you are going to get a nice line. So, uh, you are going to plot all the x that comes from uh, uh, the uh, fitted distribution which is called the model distribution and uh, you are going to plot that against the x that comes from the sample distribution. Now, if this x matches with this x, you are going to get a nice 45 degree line in your QQ plot, okay. Uh, obviously, this line is going to have a slope of 0 and uh, uh, sorry intercept of 0 and slope of 1. So, this, this is going to be a 45 degree line and uh, uh, this is going to have an intercept of 0 obviously as, as, has been, as has been drawn, it is going to have a slope of 1, uh, right. Now, let us very rarely I am going to get an exact 45 degree line. Most of the times I am going to lie around this line and how far away am I from this 45 degree line tells me how good is my model distribution, how good is my fitted distribution. If I am very far away from this line, obviously uh, the distribution that I am trying to fit does not match with the sample, right. So, that is the interpretation of a QQ plot. Very similar, slightly different however, interpretation is uh, similar, but uh, the concept is different. It is called PP plot, okay, probability, probability plot. So, essentially for a given x, uh, for a given x, I am trying to uh, plot the probability, right. I am, I am going to trot, uh, plot the probability. PP plot is applicable for both continuous as well as discrete data sets, right. So, I am going to compare uh, f with f, right. Uh, so, uh, essentially uh, the values, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, this f is the model distribution, this f is the sample distribution, right. Now, once again, if this x matches with this x, I am going to have a 45, nice 45 degree line. Uh, once again with intercept 0 and slope 1, right. Generally, uh, why do we need uh, two different plots? Uh, if the interpretation is going to be same, uh, I want a 45 degree line uh, uh, or the points around a 45 degree line. Well, if the interpretation is same, why do I need two separate plots, PP and QQ? Generally, uh, QQ plot will identify the differences between the tails of the distribution. If the uh, if the fitted distribution and the sample distributions are uh, different in their tails, that will get highlighted in the QQ plots. And if the difference in the distribution is mainly in the middle portion, right, what are the tails uh, usually, right, for a normal distribution, these are the tails, 
and this is the middle portion right this is the middle portion of the distribution so if, uh, if the model distribution uh, if the fitted distribution and the sample distribution differ in the middle portion that gets highlighted in the pp plot if the differences uh, between the model distribution and sample distributions exist mainly in the tail that gets highlighted in the qq plot therefore we look at both the plots now what was our earlier decision for the 217 values we had decided to fit exponential distribution just for a reference point we are also going to fit normal distribution and for these two distributions we are going to look at the pp plot and the qq plot right so if we fit a normal distribution to our data right not our data was called variable 1 our data was called variable 1 and what have we tried to fit uh, we have tried to fit uh, normal distribution right what did we say pp plot pp plot does pp plot pp plot compares probability with probability right so what is this uh, this is the f from the model this is the f from the sample this is the f from the sample right so the probability therefore this is going to be from 0 to 1 this is probability therefore this is going to be from 0 to 1 so on the pp plot we plot the probabilities and how does the probability plot look like here uh, so, 0 to 1 probability for the uh, observed, oh shoot, I have made a mistake. Uh, so, this is not the model, uh, this is the sample and this is the model. So, uh, and uh, this is my 45 degree line and these are the observed points, these are actual observations. Okay. Now, do you think that uh, the observed points are close to the 45 degree line? Well, not particularly. If you see the differences, this is the difference, deviation, deviation from the normal, right. So, the deviation seems to be uh, particularly high, right. I mean, uh, uh, in this portion, in the middle portion of the CDF, uh, there is uh, deviation. In the left portion of the CDF, there is deviation. On the right portion, there is less deviation, but there is deviation. So, the deviation from the normal seems to be quite high right? in the PP plots. Let us look at the QQ plot. This is the PP plot. Okay. Uh, let us say this again. So, the, uh, in the PP plot, the deviation from the normal seems to be quite high. Now, what happens if you look at the PP plot for exponential? This is where we are trying to fit exponential distribution to our data set. Our data set was variable 1. Now, look at the PP plot. Once again, uh, this is the uh, uh, sample uh, probability, uh, this is the fitted or the model probability, right? Uh, 45 degree line. Look at the observed points, very, very close to 45 degree line, very, very close to 45 degree line. So, exponential dis distribution seems to be fitting better than the fit for the normal distribution. This was the fit for the normal distribution. PP plot, PP plot fit. This is the fit for the exponential distribution. Obviously, exponential distribution seems to be fitting well. Let us observe the uh, let us observe the deviations. Let us observe the deviations. These are the deviations. Notice the scale though. This deviation may look large, but this deviation of the order of 0 0.04, right? The deviation from the normal was quite large, of the order of 0.15. Okay, negative 0.15. So, there are deviations from the exponential distribution PP plot. However, the deviations are of the order of 0 0.04 negative or positive, nothing more than that. Therefore, in terms of PP plot, we seem to be uh, observing that exponential distribution fits better than the normal distribution. Let us look at the QQ plots. Let us fit a QQ plot, right? Let us plot a QQ fitting normal distribution to our data. Normal distribution, I still want to a QQ plot. QQ plot is going to have x values. So, x from the sample and x from the model, right, uh, which is from the fitted, fitted distribution. Okay. Uh, once again, nowhere close to the 45 degree line. Notice that this is the 45 degree line because on the x axis this goes all the way to 2. So, even though it may look like a, a weird line, but it is actually a 45 degree line. 
uh, if you only take up the uh, take up to uh, 1.5 right uh, what if we fit a uh, we plot a qq for exponential fit look at this very close to the 45 degree line there are some deviations here there are some deviations here what are these deviations for these deviations seems to be for higher observed higher observed values higher observed values close to 1.95 1.96 towards the higher end of the uh, uh, values in the sample right that's where the deviation seems to be once again deviation right uh, so even for the qq plot we seem to be saying that uh, exponential distribution fits better than the normal distribution so looking at the uh, uh, visual tools uh, do we conclude that exponential distribution is a good fit for the data well it is definitely better fit compared to normal distribution but do we conclude unfortunately not so what is the last thing we look at we look at statistical goodness of fit tests okay so essentially what are we doing we are checking whether uh, our data set uh, are iid normal rent are iid variables what are iid variables independent identically distributed random variables uh, with a particular distribution that is our null hypothesis and there are two very famous tests one is called chi square test the other one is called kolmogorov smirnov test using these two tests we can actually check whether our data set has exponential distribution fitting very well to the data right before we do that uh, the test of independence has to happen uh, we have to check whether they are independent uh, uh, values right independent random variables so there is a separate uh, test uh, there is a stati separate statistical test for checking the independence and after you check the independence we come here and perform one of these two tests ks test which is kolmogorov smirnov test or a simple chi square test to check whether the data fits or, or the exponential distribution with a particular value of lambda fits the data set very well okay let us stop here if you have any questions we will definitely answer all of them but uh, uh, this is essentially how we go about fitting distributions to any business data set obviously what will follow is we will take examples of various business data sets in multiple contexts and try to fit distributions to it the last thing to be done before we close is putting the context remember i told you i kept this variable as variable 1 okay i kept this variable as variable 1 without telling you the context in which the data was collected without telling you the units of this data now i can tell you what the units of the data are actually they represent time taken to get service in a bank okay this is actually from a bank uh and uh, the customers are coming in and uh, uh, we are recording the amount of time taken uh, to get the service that they came there for obviously scale data uh, so uh, uh, and uh, we are not going to reveal the uh, bank we are not going to reveal the branch uh, but this is essentially banking operations data uh and now you know this is time data don't look at the branch don't look at the uh, uh, bank look at what the variable represents it represents time okay time time can never be negative right so uh, this variable is always going to have a support over 0 to infinity right uh, so now i have told you the context and now you know that the context also uh, seems to indicate that exponential distribution may not be that bad a fit okay and uh, uh, you can take the support of queuing theory i am i am uh, i am trying to introduce a new idea here queuing theory queuing theory uh, tells you a lot about uh, uh, the time taken in a queue and uh, uh, therefore also uh, you have some support to say that exponential distribution fits very well now that's a very vague statement that i made but uh, uh, read up on the queuing theory and uh, you will understand why exponential distribution has a very a uh, strong association with queuing theory let me stop here and end the session here